And when I come in, mm -hmm. you got a cup of coffee, you know, I can have, you know, all that kind really? of stuff. We want the plush carpet and everything. So, you yeah. know, and the musicians in the and all that kind of stuff. So I tell you, we, we've come a long way from what uh, serving the Lord is like in, amen. in, in ministry, yep. amen. And I think that we, we had it good back then, and, and, and you know, people that was before us had it rougher than that. You know, they had dirt floors and stuff, yeah. you know. So it's tambourines only. Yeah. We didn't have running water in our. Yeah, we didn't have running water at that little yeah, church we yeah. went to in Burlington. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm telling you, we, we, to love God, to come up and say we love the Lord, I'm telling you, that thing is tabbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That little church was cold. Yeah, you? yeah. You get them heaters going and you. About the time the service was over, it'd start being about right. Yeah, right. yeah. By the time you got good praise the Lord and all get all hot and stuff, you ain't even pay no attention yeah. to that stuff no more because it hasn't got hot there, all that body heat. Yeah. So I tell you, it was something. But I <laughs> enjoyed it. Lord knows I enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord to everybody. Happy New Year Eve. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
verses 17 through 21. Amen. We'll start at verse 17 and read together. Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because I have not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is born, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Thank God, thank Amen. God for the word of God. Amen. 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 We don't have no man-made affirmation in here. We got the word. Amen. Amen. We got the word. We got the word of God.
doubts and sorrow. Amen.
You know, I got to say this, just because I can. Amen. You know, we, we thought about we being small, but you know, there's a lot of people watch us. And, and we thank God for those who, who tune in. And we just want y'all to know we appreciate y'all. And we hope that y'all get a lot out of what you hear. Amen. The word being preached. Amen. The worship that, that you join in with us. Amen. And you'll learn the songs. Amen. We don't add a whole bunch of new ones. No, not too much. We, sometimes we can't find the ones we, we're supposed to find. That's so okay. you start with, with testimonies. testimonies. Amen. 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 Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Amen. Amen. Giving honor to giving honor to Apostle who is the shepherd over this house. Amen. Giving honor to our elder president. Amen. And our elder in her absence. And of course, giving honor to all my family, the saints. Amen. In their respective places. I love you guys. Amen. Get that page five, the elder for us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is the last day of 2023. Amen. Yes, amen. So it was really coming on the economy. 
going from an income of almost th almost four thousand dollars a month to hitting the uh, economy and making a thousand dollars a month was a big drop for me, amen. But I tell you, I survived. God brought me through it all. He gave me a mind, hallelujah, to want to stay, to want to stand in Him and trust Him. So that's why I said many testimonies, amen, that I have for and for the Word of God because the Word of God has kept me. I don't know about nobody else. I, I can't, you know, I can only share with you, but I have to tell my testimonies in the areas that God will permit me to voice it out, amen. But it's all because of the Word. It's all because of the trust that I have in the Word, the confidence, the relationship, amen, the intimacy. There and I appreciate God, Amen. I appreciate my 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 apostle. You know he's gone, Amen. Now, but the the man of God that I grew up under, Amen. For seven years, the Lord allowed this man to pour into my spirit, Amen. amen. The Word of God, nothing else but the Word of God. Nothing. When I say nothing else, I truly mean nothing else. But I thank and praise God that the Lord even. When we come back down, when we come here and get in those little sticky situations, they be sticky too. You know, you can't hardly get your legs up and down in these, some of these situations. But I tell you, what God, God is always there. And he's always coming to the rescue of First Kentucky International Ministry. Amen. He's always coming. And, I, and, and I'm going to make this short. Amen. But I'm going to have to shed no tear here. <laughs> Not in the last day of the year. But I do want to thank and praise God, amen. I want to thank God for Sister Mary, amen. The Lord sending her here, amen. He put it in her heart to come and get the word of God and fellowship with us in spirit and in truth, amen. And she obeyed. She obeyed the word of God, amen. Amen. The word of the Lord that came to her, amen. And I thank and praise God for my sister. Sister Jamie, amen. I'm telling you, prayer brought her right on in here, did it? Amen. Prayer got her in here. And I thank and praise God for answering the prayers. And I thank God most of all for giving her a heart now that she would want to say, okay, I'm going anyway. And I know she'll come, she'll come whether she feels well or not, but she will come to hear the word of God and support this ministry. And I appreciate that. And God knows I, I love my elder. You know, I love y'all too, but I love my elder there. I love my elder. And my daughter called me three years ago. We had a big white man coming through that door. And so I love my elder. Amen. I don't care what nobody say, I love my elder. And I appreciate, I love the word of God that's in him. I love the stand that he's taking in God. Amen. So I, I have to just be able to thank everybody because I'm telling you, and I love you too, Elder LaBrie, because one thing about it, you started out with me October 9, 2009 in ministry, though we knew each other before then in ministry. And I praise God for you sticking with us. Amen. Amen. Sticking with the ministry. Amen. Amen. Even though it's, it's out of distance, but the thing is, you come, amen, as the Lord will, and as he permits, and as you can, I, I respect that. But you never left us, and I love that, amen. And no matter what, you've always been there for us in ministry. So I love I love what God is doing. I love, you know, the, the younger saints. I wish they would grow a little bit faster, you know, you know in the Lord, amen. Brother, Brother Mark, amen. I thank you, praise God for him. Amen. He came, what, about four years ago now? Four years ago. And he said, I want to work with you in ministry. So I praise God for that. Amen. And, and been faithful and studious. And don't even be dragging around nowadays. Like, I don't know that and stuff. You know, but I'm going to eat him up in 2024, Sister Jane. I'm going to get him. Okay. And I ain't going to be holding no grudges. I'm going to get him. I'm going to let him know. I, I, got, I got your number. But I thank God for his stewardship, amen, for him coming to the ministry and faithful, you know, being here with us and stuff like that. Even when it's just me and him, he'll come, you know what I'm saying? He'll come and, 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 and be with me to make sure that, you know, nothing come to eat me up in him when I'm here on Wednesday, amen. But I appreciate, I, I love him for that. I appreciate the Lord in, in, in him. And, and, and Sister Jasmine, you know, you can't say too much about her because she starts crying and all that kind of stuff. But I thank and praise God, amen, and say, holy Jesus. I thank and praise God for her. You know, naturally she is my daughter, but spiritually I am her pastor. And I, I, I weigh in on the pastor area more than I do the daughter area. Amen. So therefore, that way she won't be laying all 
is how it'll work. But I appreciate her staying in there. I appreciate her, you know, even if I did cry in the mall, I appreciate her ear for being there to hear. And even if God gave her a little suggestion right then, she would tell me, you know, what the Lord, or what she believed the Lord was telling her. And then if she had to sleep on it, or day or two, she would come out and she said, well, Mom, I'm going to do such and such because the Lord put this on my heart to do this and say this. And, you know, it, you know, if she, she's a good fellowship partner, amen. Amen. She gets to have a week though when she wants to sit and watch TV more than she want to do. <laughs> than she want to do as far as spirituality is concerned. But the, oh, I would say 90, 90% of the time I got her attention and it comes down to righteousness. Amen. Amen. So, but like I said, you know, I thank and praise God for everyone here. I really do. I appreciate it. And I thank God for the new year coming that as he permit, as he delays his coming and permit us to cross over into the new year coming that, that we will all be able to greet and meet each other again. Amen. And as one. And I love that because we are one in Christ in this house. Amen. When it comes down to Jesus, we're one. Amen. And I'm not going to say, you know, that we, you know, we like that or that we leave or anything, but I know that our heart is connected to one another. That whatever we need, whatever we have to do in Christ, God will make sure that somebody out of us will know what to do. That's you too, so they'll be a little brief. Amen. So, but I, I just wanted to just say that I love you all. I appreciate what you what you do. Don't don't think don't think that I'm not mindful of your, your stewardship and you know your giving and all that. I, but I'm very mindful of your attentiveness to the Word of God. I'm more mindful of that than anything else. Thank God for the money because that money keeps us in this building. Amen. Amen. None of it is in my pocket. That's for sure. Amen. I do have a little check that I give my own. Amen. And I, I govern myself accordingly with that. So, but I praise God for you all. I praise God for no matter what comes your way, you're still standing. Amen. And I'm going to believe that God is going to take us even higher because, see, faithfulness and stewardship is, is so important in the eyesight of God, in the heart of God, because it says, I'm going for Jesus. I'm going to continue to do it God's way. And, and like I said, it's just it's just beautiful to me. Even when other people shut personal touch out of their lives and stuff, you know, we still go on. And we go on and we go on. Amen. And we better than the energized bunny. Amen. We got more energy than he did, but his stuff going to wear out soon. Amen. But that's my testimony. I just wanted, you know, in, in this service, that I'm not preaching today, Elder, so I get a chance to run my mouth right here. Amen. And just say that I love you all. I thank God for you. Amen. And I know if it's the Lord's will, we will have a prosperous 24. Amen. I'll go shaking it up my foot. Amen. Because see, we're outside of here and outside of our homes where you're going to see a lot of things are going to play out. A lot of people are going to go down. Amen. But I'm telling you, the word of the Lord is going to uphold us above it all. Amen. He's going to keep us, Sister, Sister Mary. He's going to keep us. You're going, to, you're going to see that thing. He's going to raise us up and put us in a place in him that no matter what goes on down here, it won't be able to touch us, Sister Jane. It won't even come down to us. Our address will become CO Box 90 Psalms 91. Amen. Kill Box Psalms 91. That's right. Amen. So I thank and praise God for you all. Amen. Amen.
what it was, but they were sick and everything. Uh, to the point that they were shutting all, shutting down farms in the, all around the district, all around the area. And uh, I remember one of the employees asking me, "Is like, oh man, uh, do you think we're going to get shut down?" Or he's like worrying and everything. It's like, if it happens, it happens. And I'm, I just remember to hear the message all the time, all go through my head the whole thing. Uh, the Lord will provide. Whether He will break the, He'll heal the, the sick animals or whatever, or he, if he do shut us down for a couple of months, the Lord will provide and he will provide for his people and everything. So having that faith and that security of if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, amen. So, so it's a, I like to uh, pray, the, pray the Lord keep that in my heart to keep me moving forward. Amen. amen. amen.
Lord, giving us another opportunity to come into your presence to yes, praise and glorify your name. Lord, bless that offering. Bless those who gave and bless those who had the heart to give. And bless the ghost who strengthened up your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to turn the mic over to Elder Wright, amen. amen. All right, Elder, you know what to do. Break it down. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Woo. God is good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, if y'all will stand with me, we're going to pray our prayer that we pray every time I preach. And if you're at home, if you would, if you can, stand with us also. Last time for this year. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, speak to my heart, speak to my heart, and change my life, and change my life in your precious name. In your precious name, Amen. Amen. Father, I just ask, Lord, that this morning, as we break open the bread of Your Word, God, that You would speak to our hearts, Lord, that You would challenge us, Lord, that You would open hearts that they would hear. Let Your Word strike as arrows, Lord that would pierce to the heart and to the spirit. Lord, that people would hear your word and would come to you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Uh, so, we've made it through a year. Amen. Getting ready for a new one. Yes, Are you excited about what God's doing in your life? Amen. Are you excited about the prospects of what he's going to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's that's something we have to get into this idea we to expect things that God is going to do. And I'm not yeah. talking about getting you stuck. Amen. Amen. Just so y'all at home will know, I'm not talking about God's gonna give you a new house next year or a new car or 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 a five hundred dollar a month raise or none of that stuff. But what I'm saying is that we should come expecting the Lord to change us yes. to be more like him. Yes. So with that in mind this morning, in less than 12 hours, just think about this. Amen. In less than 12 hours, 2023 is going to be a memory. Amen. It's going to be gone. We can't get it back. That's right. Amen. That's right. Can't can't wish for it to start over again. Amen. Every year when this event takes place, people around the world lay out for themselves plans for the coming year. Yeah, they what do they call those New Year's resolutions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the vast majority of these never come to fruition. Did y'all know that? Is that a surprise to you? They're, they're forgotten as quickly as they're made. That's right. That's right. And, and most people, most people, I know there are some of y'all out there, and I know those watching us never go back on their resolution. Mm -hmm. But most people know before they make them that they're not going to keep them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They, they do it to make themselves feel good. Or they do it because they're in a group of people that say, "Let what's your New Year's resolution for, for this coming year? So they make something up just, just so that they can say, well, well I'm going to do this next year. Knowing good and well they ain't going to do that. That's right. That's right. But this year can be different. Amen. Amen. And, and everyone who, who hears this, everyone who listens and hears, understand. Just because you listen don't mean you hear. That's right. But for everyone who listens and hears what the Lord has to say to you today, Amen. you can go into this next year different. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. See, I'm not talking to you about some self-help strategy that's, that's right. going to help you keep your resolutions. I ain't going to do that. That's right. I'm not Tim Robbins. Or any of these other self-help gurus that, that get up and try to tell people, if you'll follow these 12 steps next year, your, your year will prosper and you will come out of 2024 with a better view of life and all these other things. That, that, that ain't what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
So just so you don't get that assumption, those at home, a lot of people, Pastor, make, make assumptions when someone gets up and starts talking about, I'm going to tell you how you can start next year different. They assume that you're going to tell them how, how they can keep their resolutions. Oh, yeah. how, how they can yeah. have a positive attitude going into the next year and keep that positive attitude all year long. Mm -hmm. But but when you assume those things, it, there's an old saying about the word assume, but we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but this morning, I want to address a pandemic of worldwide proportions. I, I was thinking about how to address this subject. And I got to thinking, over the last few years, we've heard this word pandemic mm -hmm. every time you turn on the TV, turn on the radio, anything else. Everybody's talking about pandemic. Amen. Pandemic this, pandemic that. Oh, yeah. Deal? Yeah, there you go. Um, we talk, we've heard this word pandemic, and, and if you listen to the smart people, they say when, when there's a new pandemic, there, there's another pandemic coming down the line. Always. Well, well, I want to talk to you this morning about a pandemic of worldwide proportion. It transcends time. It transcends nationality, mm -hmm. creed. Ethnicity, I'm not saying race, ethnicity, because we're all the same race. Amen. Continents, gender, wealth, and position. This pandemic is not a respecter of persons. The World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has no vaccine or cure for this pandemic. The government has no program set up to give stimulus checks for this pandemic. Amen. The Republican and Democratic parties have no candidates that can meet the demands of this pandemic. Amen. In fact, the vast majority of the world refuses to even acknowledge that this pandemic exists. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you know that? That's right, that's right. Everybody's Watching us now, and they're going, what in the world is that man talking about? Well, I want to address this pandemic, which is a disease. That's what a pandemic is. It's a rampant disease. And, and this disease affects every single human on the planet. We're all infected with it. Amen. Amen. None of us are immune to it. It's a disease that we were conceived with. It's a disease we were born with. And it's a disease that is fatal. In fact, for some, it's doubly fatal. It won't just kill them once. It will kill them twice. Well, how can that be? Well, we're going to look at what the Word of God tells us about this disease. Not only about the disease, but this morning, I'm going to tell you the cure. Because there is a cure for this disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we must understand what the disease is first. In, in Psalm 51.5, David writes this, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, right. and in sin my mother conceived me. So here's the disease. Here's the pandemic. This worldwide pandemic that touches 100% of people in 100% of the world and is 100% fatal is sin and iniquity. Romans 3.23 bears this out. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. So it's fatal. Everybody gets it. We all fall short. We've all sinned. Back 1 John 1, 5, listen to what the apostle writes. And this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light 
and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie right. and do not do the truth. That's right. In verse 8, John goes on and he says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So right off the bat, he tells us everybody has sin. If you deny that you have sin, you're a liar. And then in verse 10, he says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, mm -hmm. and his word is not in us. Mm -hmm. So, right off the bat, here's what we know. One, we all have sinned. That's right. Say have. Yeah. Have. We have sinned. Secondly, we all do sin. Say do. 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 We all do sin. Well, now, that's not so. I'm saying you still sin. Amen. You may not be a sinner, but you still sin. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that as we go. Amen. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar, and his word is not in us. And there's a problem there. Because Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. So, number one, God's not a liar. That's right. Secondly, Titus 1, 1 tells us, Paul, a slave of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of God's elect and the full knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness, Titus 1, 2 says, In the hope of eternal life, which the God who cannot lie promised from all eternity. So God cannot lie. He does not and he cannot lie. In fact, John says in his gospel that God is true. And Paul tells us in Romans, Let God be true and every man a liar. So, what do we know? We have sin, we do sin, and God's true, not a liar. So we can't say that we haven't sinned, because if we do, we make God a liar, and that's impossible. Amen? Or do we all agree on that? Okay. So, the pandemic, the disease, is sin. Say this with me. Sin. One more time. Sin. That's the pandemic. That's right. Now, one of my spiritual fathers used to say this about sin all the time. He said, sin will take you further than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you more than you can ever pay. That's right. That's right. That's pretty, pretty intense. Yes, but is. yet it's true. Amen. So, this morning, we're going to look at the cure. Go to Isaiah chapter 52. So I had to get through all that so we could get to this, but I want us all, we have to lay a, a, a foundation that we understand that every man sins. Every man is born in sin. None of us are free from it. It goes all the way back to the garden. Man sinned in the garden because of Adam, that seed of sin, entered into man. So we all are conceived and born with that seed, with that disease. And as God told Adam and Eve in the garden, because of sin, you will die. So death entered because of that. So it's a fatal disease that everyone has, whether we want it or not. Well, that's not fair. Talk to Adam. He's the one who broke the rule. God gave him one law, one, and he couldn't keep that one. So now you see why we're in the mess we're in. So, Isaiah 52, go to verse 13. And I'm reading out of the Legacy Standard. It'll be a little different, but it should be close enough. Verse 13, it says, Behold, my servant will prosper. 
He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted. Just as many were appalled at him, my people saw his appearance was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Thus he will sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him. For what had not been told them, they will see. And what they had not heard, they will understand. So we begin, this chapter 53 actually starts in verse 13 of chapter 52. And we're talking about the exalted and the suffering servant. So when we see these verses here about my servant will prosper, he will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted. So in, in John, and y'all can write these scriptures down, because I'm going to, y'all have to listen fast today, because we've got a lot of ground to cover. John 3, 13, John, Jesus says, and no one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the son of man. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. So we're looking at, at what he says here in, in Isaiah 52, 13. Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be high and lifted up. In John 12, 27, John writes that Jesus says, Now my soul has become dismayed. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. He's asking a question to the people. He said, should I ask the Father to save me from this hour? But he goes, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. This is why I'm here. Yeah. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it was, were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying, and the angel has spoke to him. But Jesus answered and said, this voice has not come for my sake, but for your sake. In other words, my father talked to me, not for me, but he talked so you could understand. That's right. Because then he goes on and he says, now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I... If I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was about to die. So when, he, when, when the word starts out here, it says he will be high and lifted up. When Jesus came the first time, he was high and lifted up. Because when he was lifted up on this cross, as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, the cross is the focal point of the gospel. Amen. Because as Jesus is high and lifted up, as he's suspended between heaven and earth, he draws men to him. That is the rally point for believers. It is the rally point for those who would be cured of this disease right. that we call sin. That's right. So he is lifted up. In fact, John in his first epistle says the Son of God was manifested for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. So as he is raised up, as he is lifted high, he destroys the works of the devil. That's why Jesus could say judgment is upon the world and the ruler of this world will be cast out. The reason being is because I'm being lifted up. As I am lifted up and as we go through Psalm 50 or Isaiah 53, we'll see this, this picture of the defeat of the ruler of this world. What destroys his work, what destroys the hold that he has over man, and what destroys the hold that this, this disease has over us. That's right. That's right. Because Isaiah tells us this. Now, we've seen where he's high and lifted up, but then it says that he is exalted, he's greatly exalted. 
Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, he says that, that have this, in Philippians 2, 5, have this way of thinking in yourself, which also was also in Christ Jesus, who although existing in the form of God, he was God, he is God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a slave. And being made in the likeness of man, being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, being lifted up. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, God also highly exalted him yeah. because he, he was obedient to be lifted up yeah. between heaven and earth. To pay for the penalty of our sin. Therefore, because of his obedience and what he did on the cross, God therefore exalted him yes. high. He lifted him up and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Mm -hmm. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those that are in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. Amen. That every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Amen. to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So he's high and lifted up on the cross by his obedience to go through that God, his Father, lifted him up and exalted him. So when God can say to him, I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it through you, That's right. That's through right. your obedience and what you are doing on my behalf. Hebrews 2.17 says, Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For since he himself was tempted in it, that which he was suffered, he has suffered, he is able to come and help those who are tempted. Because Jesus, the suffering servant, because the one who came to, to be glorified and to glorify the Father through his obedience, he became like man so that he can become a high priest on our behalf. One who, like us, has been tempted in every way, but yet he was without sin. So he is therefore able to come help those of us who have been tempted, That's who are being tempted. That's right. And God has glorified him because of this. In fact, in the revelation, he is glorified by all of heaven. Yes. In, in Revelation 5, 5, John writes, and one of the elders said to me, stop crying. Behold the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, and that's going to be an important one here in a minute, has overcome so as to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw in the midst of the throne the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders a lamb standing as if slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent unto all the earth. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Understand. See, in heaven, this song hasn't been sung yet. We've seen it. We're seeing it come to pass, but it has not happened yet. He says that he, he saw them, and they were singing a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, because you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, people from every tribe and tongue and people of every nation. And you made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God and they will reign upon the earth. And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was myriad of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain oh, yeah. 
to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. In every created thing which is in heaven. Notice, now I want you to listen. Remember in Philippians, Paul told us that, that God has, because of Christ's obedience, he has given him a name that is above every name. That every tongue, every knee in heaven and in earth and under the earth will bow before him. Well, listen to what it says here. It says, Sing with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every created thing which is in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, on the sea, and all things in them I heard saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying amen and the elders fell down in worship. Amen. He's lifted up and he's exalted. Do y'all see this? Amen. This picture that, that we're given in Isaiah is prophesying about this. He's saying this is what's going to take place. This this lamb, this, this servant that is coming, this is what's going to tell who he is. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 53, 1, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? Now, now this is kind of odd sticking it in here, but here's what he's talking about. Who's believed the gospel? That's right, that's right. Who's heard it? See, we present the gospel to people, and the Holy Spirit speaks to them and convicts them, but not everyone who hears, he says, who's believed our report? Who's believed the gospel that we presented? And to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? He's been revealed to those who believe. That's right. Those who will come and surrender before him and be washed in his blood to be cleansed and cured of this fatal disease which we call sin. That's right. In John 6, 44, he's, Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. That's right. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Amen. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. What does he say over here? Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? Those who have heard and those who have learned, they come to Jesus. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. So he has been revealed. We reveal him as we proclaim the gospel. That's right. That's and as we proclaim the gospel and this message of repentance, this message that God loves you, God has sent his son to give his life for you, that you can know him. And if you will hear, if you will believe this report, you will see the arm of God as he reaches down and snatches you out of the miry pit and lifts you up and sets your feet on a solid rock of Christ Jesus Amen. for eternal life. Amen. Amen. So who has believed our report? It's those who hear the gospel and receive it. And then he goes on. In, in verse 2, for he grew up before him a tender shoot, like a root out of a parched ground. He's that root of David. He's growing up from this Davidic line that, that has, has so sinned and so trespassed against God and is withering away. But here's this tender shoot. This, this, this one, he's, he's rising up out of a parched ground. Isaiah is trying to get the people of Israel to understand. You don't know that he's coming. He's coming. Things look bad right now. You look destitute. Your land is dry. Your heart is dry. But he's coming. That's right. That's right. He's coming and he's going to rise up a tender shoot 
And then he goes on and he says he had no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor the appearance that we should desire him. In other words, he didn't look like a shampoo model. He didn't look like Fabio with, with manicured toenails and fingernails and beautiful flowing hair and blue eyes. And, and like, he, he didn't look like that. It said that there, there was nothing about him that should draw us to him. It wasn't the way Jesus looked that drew people to Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it's not how he looks that should draw us to him. That is not what draws those who need him to him. That's right. It was not his looks. It says he was despised and forsaken of men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hid their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Men despised Jesus because... Why? Because he exposed their sin. Amen. Amen. Well, how do you know that? Well, listen. Listen to what John 3, 14 says. <laughs> We're going to get to this. Here's what Jesus says about himself. As Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in say whoever, 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 what does that word mean? Whoever. whoever. Guess what it means in the Greek? Whoever. Amen. Oh. <laughs> you want to know what it means in, in um, Aramaic? Whoever. whoever. Yeah. Hebrew. Whoever. It doesn't change. He says that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. Well, didn't Jesus just say that the world was being judged? Ah, hold on a minute. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. We were judged at conception. Remember, we're born with a disease. We were conceived with a disease. It is, it is 100%. Every man, every continent, every woman is born with it. It is fatal. It will kill. There is no way around it. But we, he sent him that through him. We might be saved. Those who, who do believe are not judged. Those who do not believe are judged already. So to be judged, all you have to do is nothing. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Just keep living like you're living. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, here's where we get to what we're talking about here. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds be exposed. Amen. So when it says that he was despised and they did not esteem him, Jesus was despised because he is the light of heaven. Come into a world that is filled with sin and is overcome with darkness. He shines forth the light of the kingdom of heaven and it exposes everyone's heart before their own eyes. Amen. Amen. So men despised him. He was not esteemed except by those who he revealed himself to and they came willingly. As the disciples, when he said, come and follow me, there was something about Jesus and it wasn't the way he looked. That's right. That's and it wasn't even in what he said, but there was something about Jesus That's right. That's right. that their hearts were in line with. And they said, yeah, yep. we're coming. Amen. Back when Jesus asked them, who do men say I am? And they told him, some say Isaiah, some say John the Baptist, some say the, one of the prophets. Well, who do you say I am? Peter says, you're the Christ. Amen. Amen. You're the son of the living God. Amen. Man didn't show you that. That was my father. 
See, no man can come to the Lord except the Father reveal him to him. That's right. That's right. So we see Jesus. He's not esteemed by those around him. And then in verse 4, it says, Surely our griefs he, he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Men saw him going through the scourging. They saw him being led up the hill to where he would be raised up. And men thought he was just awful. But what they didn't understand was that he is bearing our afflictions. He is bearing our sorrows. Because it goes on and it says, but he was pierced through for our transgressions. See, you can, you can make this really personal. Yes, you can. He was pierced for Nelson's transgression. Mm -hmm. He was crushed for Nelson's iniquities. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of Nelson's peace fell upon him. Mm -hmm. By his wounds, Nelson is healed. My spirit is healed from this disease. See, here's the healing that we're talking about here. This disease, this sin that we are conceived in and born in, when it says by his stripes we're healed, first and foremost, we are healed of sin. Amen. Amen. Because sin is fatal. Mm -hmm. Not just fatal once, but sin will kill you twice. Amen. What do you mean by that? I'll get to it in a minute. The chasten, chastening of our peace fell upon him. By his wounds we were feet. He'll now all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. In other words, there's a way that seems right to a man. That's right. That's right. But its way leads where? Mm -hmm. To death. Mm -hmm. What's the wages of sin? Death. death. So, the way that man thinks looks good, the way that looks like, oh, that's the way we ought to go, where is it leading to? Death. Death, which is the wages of what? Sin. sin. So, the disease of sin is, death. leads us, yes, death, it leads us our own way. Man thinks he can do it his way. Nope. Nope. And this is the problem that happened in the garden. What he's talking about right here goes all the way back to Genesis 3. Right. When Adam and Eve thought they could do it their own way. Satan said, surely God didn't mean that. That's what he said. Just eat this fruit and you'll be just like him. You will know everything. See, he's trying to, I, mean, I tell this all the time. And, and hopefully someone watching today, if this is your first time watching, listen to this. Satan told Eve. God surely didn't mean that you will die. You're not going to die if you eat this fruit. God's trying to keep you from knowing what he knows. But I'm on your side. I want you to know everything. So if you'll eat this fruit, I promise you're not going to die, but you're going to know it all. And that woman took that fruit, took a bite out of it, Turned around to Adam, who was right there with her, who should have stopped her, should have knocked that fruit out of the serpent's hand, took a bite too. He willingly sinned. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that's why Adam is the one who is, is accounted that's right. as the one who brought sin into the world. He did it willingly. Eve was deceived. Adam did it of his own choosing. Mm -hmm. Now she did it of her own will, but she was deceived by a lie. That's right. That's right. Adam did it knowing what he was doing. Amen. And both of their eyes were open and they realized they were naked. In other words, they knew they sinned. Nakedness is is means that we're exposed. We have sin in our life. So this goes all the way back. We like sheep have all gone astray. The reason he says like sheep is because Adam is the first one. And here's how sheep are. Sheep are dumb. Yes, they are. Yes, 
sheep will follow the one in front of them. Yes, they will. Wherever that one goes, the one behind it goes. Amen. They will walk off a cliff because the one in front of them walked off a cliff. Sure so we all, like sheep, have gone astray because Adam, the first sheep, he ate of the sin and followed that way. So we're just going with him. Like father, like son. Right down the line. All of us. Thinking we can do it our own way. In fact, he even thought he could cover up his own sin by himself. Yeah. Made himself a covering of figs, leaves. Amen. And Jesus and God come down and he said, who told you you were naked? And I've said this time and time again. We see the first representation of the gospel in Genesis. Mm -hmm. For those of you watching, if you've never heard this before, Adam and Eve, they sinned. Their nakedness, their, their sin was exposed. They saw their nakedness. They tried to cover their own sin by their own means. But you cannot do that. None of us can cover our sin in our own abilities. We don't have the power to do that. Only God can cover sin. So the first blood sacrifice for a sin offering was in Genesis. God killed an animal, his self, and clothed them with its skin. So the first sacrifice for sin was in Genesis, of which Jesus is now in Isaiah. We're being told that he is coming and he is going to be the one who bears our iniquities. He will be pierced through for my transgressions. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then Jesus fulfills this in the Gospels when he comes and he lays down his life. He willingly is lifted up between heaven and earth, suspended on the cross, pouring out his life's blood on our behalf that we can be eternally covered in sin. Our sin forever washed away. And therefore, God has exalted him that he has a name that is above every other name. That every knee, whether it wants to or not, one day will bow before Jesus and will confess that he is Lord, both on in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Even those who are in the grave, under the earth, they will bow before Jesus and they will proclaim that he is Lord. So we've all, like sheep, gone astray. We've all followed this pattern of sin that we were conceived in and born in. We walked in it willingly. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then he says, But Yahweh, but the Lord caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He's the propitiation of our sin. He's the payment for it. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. You, again, we see this picture of a lamb that goes willingly to the slaughter. Again, they walk right behind the one in front of them. Whether they're going to good or bad. But Jesus, like a spotless lamb, he walked without making a noise to the slaughter that he could pay for our sin. And like a sheep that is silent before its shears, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, and when he was on the cross, he gave up his life, he was cut off from the land of the living. That for the transgressions of my people, striking was due to him. So his grave was assigned with the wicked man, yet he was with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. What that means is Jesus was hung on a cross between two thieves. But yet he was placed in a rich man's tomb. Everything that Isaiah writes, 400 years or so before, well, almost 900 years before Jesus came, he's writing about the crucifixion, which they didn't even know anything about at that time. And in verse 10, but Yahweh, but the Lord was pleased 
to crush him, putting him to grief. If you would place his soul as a guilt offering, he will see his seed, he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will succeed in his hand. What Jesus came to do, Paul tells us that, that he was, that God took the righteous for the unrighteous. Him who had no sin, he who knew no sin, became sin on my behalf, on your behalf. He took my sin. That disease that I was born with was placed upon Jesus. And God, in, in his pleasure, pressed down and crushed Jesus on the cross for your sin and for my sin. And he did so until it was paid. And when the payment had been fulfilled, Jesus made two statements. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit because it is finished. It's done. All sin is paid for. I've done what I came to do. I'm coming to be with you. I'm bringing myself to you. All right here. The vaccine is sure. The cure is eternal. There's no little bit of it left. See, that's the thing about, about things that doctors give us when we're sick. It, it, can, it can deal with symptoms. Yeah. But it doesn't really kill what's, what's making you sick. It deals with the symptoms of it, and unless your body, its its immune system began to work to fight it off. But it never really, do you know, when you're sick, I don't know that it ever, ever really goes away. Because it has killed you a little bit more than what you were before you got sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the side effects of murder. If you've ever had pneumonia, pneumonia never goes away. You cannot get rid of pneumonia completely. I got pneumonia when I was in Korea. It about killed me. About every, well, I haven't gotten it in a while, thank God. But, but I used to, about every three or four years, I would get pneumonia. But it's because it just lays dormant. You can't completely get over it. But with Jesus, this, this, fatal disease of sin that we carry. When Jesus washes you in his, in his blood, when he forgives you of your sin, it is gone. 100% gone. There is no residual. There is nothing left to, to flare back. It is gone. Dead. Killed. He's the cure. And if you let him be, he'll be the vaccine because by the Holy Spirit in us, he will help us when we are tempted to call upon our high priest who gave himself once for us and brought himself once before the throne of heaven to present himself once for all sin, for all time. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge to righteous one, my servant will justify the many, as he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide for him a portion with the many, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sins of many and interceded. For the transgressions. Again, we have a high priest who has gone through everything we have gone through. That's right. That's right. Therefore, he bore our sins, and he therefore can help me when I am being tempted to overcome. Because when we are tempted, the Bible assures me of this, that I will not be tempted beyond what I'm able to handle. 
Because when I am tempted, the Lord God himself will make a way of escape if I'm watching for it. If I'm in Christ, if I'm in his word, if I'm constantly dwelling with him, if I'm abiding in him, and his word is abiding in me, and when temptation comes, I can cry out to my priest, my advocate, who will come to me and help me through. And if I do sin, which what do we know we, we all have sinned? We all do sin. So if I sin, when I do stumble, I have an advocate. I have an attorney before the Lord who has already paid my debt. All I have to do is confess and repent. And he is righteous and faithful to forgive me of my sins. Amen. Amen. Because he paid for them. That's right. That's right. He's my cure. He's my vaccine yes, from the disease of sin, the pandemic that this world, see, what did the CDC and them would look at that pandemic? Get some saved people in there. Let them talk about the real sickness, about the real disease, because the bottom line is all disease, all, all sickness comes because of the fall of man in the garden. It's all a result of that one act, that one, that one willful act of Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But through the one willful act yeah. of Christ Jesus, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. who willingly mm -hmm. went to the cross let himself be lifted up yeah. that he would draw all men to him. So if you're watching this morning, if you're here this morning and you're struggling, look, we're at the end of the year. Everybody comes again. Like I said, we come to the end of the year and people say, oh, I hope next year's better. I got to do better. I want things to be better. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of doing these same things that I feel horrible about the next morning. I'm tired of living like I'm living. Friend, let me tell you, today's the day you can change it. I know a man who can change it for you. Amen. And all you have to do is, is willingly yes. 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 come and say, Jesus, please. Yes. Yes, sir. And I, as an ambassador of Christ, plead with you on God's behalf. Mm -hmm. Be reconciled to God. Because he made him who knew no sin to be sin on your behalf. So that you might become the righteousness of God yes, Lord. in Christ. That's right. That's right. See, and, and we could go into this talking about when, there, when it means that you die twice, the first death is, is natural. There's coming a day, friend, when everybody, the Bible assures us that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every one of us will give an account for our life. And if you've walked in this life, if you have not come to receive the cure, if you have not come to let Christ wash you and cleanse you and purify you in his blood, and if you have not surrendered to that lordship, and you have not lived in his righteousness, you will stand before God on that day. And then it tells us, it assures us that the books will be open. Your life will be judged by your deeds. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, then you will be cast into a place of eternal torment, eternal judgment. And it says in, in Revelation that that is the second death. Yeah, yeah. Don't die twice. Please, I, I'm begging you, don't die twice. Come to him today. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary. If your year has been horrible, if you feel like the weight of life is weighing you down, he says, come to him. Yes. If you're weary, come to him. If you're heavy laden, if the weight of life is pressing you down, come to him and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. 
You will. You will. Not a might. Jesus doesn't say, if you come to me, you might find rest. That's right. That's right. He doesn't say that. He says, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the Revelation, he says, I stand at the door and knock. He's standing. That means he's not waiting forever, people. Friend, when somebody stands at your door and knocks and they didn't bring a chair with them so they was there for the long haul, that means if you don't answer the door, they're moving on to the next one. That's right. That's right. Says so he stands at the door and knocks and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. I will dine with him and he with me. To end 2023 free of sin. Amen. Start 2024 as a new creation. Amen. Start 2024 with a fresh outlook, washed and clean. Listen, you're, you will wake up and you'll be life will be like my circumstances may not have changed. But I know the one who, who's in control of it. I know the one who can bring me through it. I know the one who can help me to stand firm and come through on the other side. My message today is this. Come. All who are thirsty, come. Drink of the living water. Yes, Lord. Yes. But I don't know how to do that. Go to Psalm 51. Yes. Everybody's got a Bible. If you don't have one, get online and you can look up Psalm 51. If you got Google, you can Google Isaiah 51. And if you read this, this psalm, it'll tell you how to pray. Be gracious to me with your loving kindness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I know my, you have to confess that you know you've sinned. That's right, that's right. And not just that you have sinned. He says, against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sights. Friend, your sin is against God. Amen. God alone. Amen. It may hurt other people, but first and foremost, it is against God. That's right. That's right. And when you get it right with God, then you will make it, you'll do what you can to make it right with other people. If you've hurt them, and if it's if it's in in the right place to do it. Sometimes you just just need to let it go and let it be under the blood. That's right. But there are people that we can we need to take care of it. But I know my transgressions against you and you only if I sin and done evil in your sight. Purify me and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Blot out my iniquities and create in me a clean heart. Oh, yes. Deliver me. And open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Friend, if you'll go to that and if you will pray that, if you will read that and let it get in your heart and you make that your prayer and you pour that out before God in humility and brokenness, I guarantee you yes, that yes, he will come to you, he yes. will wash you, he will cleanse you, he will make you new, and he will lift you up and set you. On the solid rock of yes, Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. And if you can't do that, just cry out the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you cry out that name and you cry it out long enough and you cry it out with yes. a true and yes. sincere heart, yes. I guarantee you he will come to you and he will lead you Amen. Amen. through repentance and he will wash you and he will cleanse you. So in 2023, Turn it to Jesus. He loves you. He died for you, friend. And he wants you to be with him in eternity. Start 2024 fresh. If, if you 
are close enough to hear, come and be discipled. Amen. If you're not close enough to hear, watch on live stream it, and find a Bible-believing church near you so that you can be discipled. Amen. But you can continue watching here because we, we're going to pour out the word, but find you a Bible-believing church where you can be around believers to get the fellowship that you That's need. Right. That's right. And I guarantee you, if you do that, next year will be different. Yes. Your circumstances may not change right away, but, but you'll be different in them. And you'll have a different outlook on them. That's right. And you'll come through them with a joy and a peace that, that you won't even understand. Your friends around you will look at you and say, why are you smiling? Your life's a mess. Amen. But I know the one who made my life. And they'll be like, you're out your mind. And you'll be, yes, I am, because I love Jesus. And Jesus is walking in me. Not just with me, in me. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your son, for Christ Jesus. We thank you for the cross. Father, for without that cross, we would all be dead, yes. doomed. Yes. Father, but there is the cross. And there is Jesus and there is the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. And there is forgiveness. So, Father, as we end this year and we, we get prepared to go into the next one, Lord, lead us into it in your light and in your glory that we may be a testimony and a witness of your goodness to those around us, those who are watching. If there are those, Lord, who don't know you, who are coming to you today, Father, reach out to them and lead them and guide them as they draw near to you that they would be washed and cleansed and raised up out of death and begin the next year in Christ. And we give you thanks for it all in Jesus' name.